Hello and welcome to another thing about Tartan. Today I'm here with the 28th Chief of Clan McPherson, James Brodie McPherson of Clooney, otherwise known as Jamie, who is the owner of McPherson Property, an estate agent in the picturesque Scottish Borders town of Melrose. Jamie is married to the lovely Annie McPherson, daughter of the Lord and Lady McPherson of Drumochter, who was coincidentally the son of one of the co-founders of the Clan McPherson Association. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jamie. It's great to have you here. Um, so why don't we start a little bit with you telling us about your role as Clan Chief and what it involves. Well, Clan Chief is uh, well, it's a great honour, first and foremost, um, to be the sort of the head of your family. Mm -hmm. um, it is an ambassadorial role in many respects political, uh, non-political, whichever way you look at it, mm -hmm. um, certainly within and without of the clan association. Um, but as I said, it is ultimately a, a great honour um, and one that I hope will uh, make many people proud within the association as I sort of stand here being the figurehead, if you like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And how long have you been actively involved in the clan? Well, since birth. My <laughs> father was the chief before me. Uh -huh. um, I turned 50 this year and I've only missed one clan gathering, so oh, wow. I've done 49 of them. So it's been a big part of my life, for, well, the best part of 50 years. Yeah, so even when you were younger, it was still something you were really involved in. Absolutely. There were certain bits of the gathering, uh, if you want to talk about the gathering, that we weren't allowed to because we were underage and yeah. not old enough to dance or whatever. But uh -huh. no, ultimately, we... Uh, the involvement was from a very young young age. Oh, that's great then. So it, w it was something that has always been a part of your life then. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what does being a member of Clan McPherson mean to you? Um, I suppose everything in so many ways, but no, ultimately it, it, it's that association with family, extended family. Mm -hmm. uh, we call them ourselves all cousins, um, but ultimately, you know, watching... The connection of people from further afield than, than Britain uh, all the way out to Australia, New Zealand, their delight and joy of being connected with other people from other countries and, and usually connection through the McPherson name. But it's, mm -hmm. it's, it means a lot to have that extended family across the world. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. And what do you love most about being clan chief? Is there any aspects of it that are really rewarding to you? Yeah, what I like most is, is, is the honour that, that it brings, but, but it's more about the interaction that comes with all of these people from around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I could maybe make a stop in most countries in the world and stay with a McPherson or somebody who's related to a McPherson. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of that, which is something that I love, but, but also watching, watching the joy on people's faces when they, they reunite you know, yeah. with family, with cousins, with associated families. Um, and it's, you know, lovely to think that whilst I sit, sit at the top of the tree, we are very much first among equals. Mm -hmm. um, and it is something that, you know, we hope to, to carry on and, and hopefully that connection will bring joy to many more for, for many years to come. Mm -hmm. And is there any aspects of your role that you find challenging that you would like to change? <laughs> Uh, not really. Um, as a chief, a chief is different to potentially being the president of the Clan McPherson Association, mm -hmm. uh, if you like. So there are two different entities there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably not allowed to get involved in the, the politics of the Clan McPherson Association. Yeah. Um, although I have the parting shot if there is something that probably needs to be decided on. And uh, I would hope that if we went to war, I could uh, I could rally up some McPhersons. But but joking aside, um, there are no frustrations. I would like to be more involved in the clan, um, which my father wasn't from a sort of um, volunteer perspective. Any way I can help, mm -hmm. you know, I'm I'm a local businessman who maybe has some ideas and put them to the table. But yeah. but I've also got to step the line that uh, it's not a political position, and I'm not the one to be running the show we have a lot of brilliant volunteers who, who look after the association for us mm -hmm. yeah it's like you're you are the head of the clan you're the face of the clan yeah yeah and how did it feel growing up knowing that you would take the chief title from your father um 
Well, I didn't know first and foremost. My I had an older brother who who passed away. Right. Um, but before he passed away, he passed or relinquished the uh, the Clooney or the yeah my being chief of the clan before he died mm -hmm. and I became heir by Tanistry. When he passed, I then became younger of Clooney and stepped into his shoes right. uh, to follow my father. So um, I haven't been worrying about it for 49 years. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's, it's, there are no, as I said, there are no pressures to it, but there is a lot of responsibility in, as I say, again, going back to this ambassadorial role. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I, I haven't, there's been no fear or intrepidation about it. Yeah. Uh, I very much look forward to it. And I've also, because I've been so active for so many years, I know pretty much everyone involved in the association, mm -hmm. which makes it makes it easier. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like stepping into this completely new association a year ago when you became chief. Absolutely. There are other associations that are associated with being a chief. Mm -hmm. um, the Standing Council of Scottish Chiefs being one where I don't know anybody yeah so there are a lot of things still to learn still to sort of go through yeah um but but i'm very much very much very comfortable within the clan mcpherson association the clan bubble yes. for now um because as i said it's been a big part of my life uh-huh and obviously you said that you've been actively involved in the um, association and the clan for basically your whole life. So was there any other ways that you celebrated your Scottish roots while you were growing up outside of the clan? Um, mm, celebrated? No, I suppose, you know, wearing the kilt can't, I don't know. But yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're always celebrating our, our Scottish roots. And I think we are very lucky, going back to an original comment of living in Scotland, having all mm -hmm. of this on our doorstep. Yeah. Uh, what we have to be very careful of is that we don't take it for granted. You know, you go to somewhere like Australia, they don't have the Queen on their doorstep. We do. Yeah. They would revel in the opportunity to meet the Queen or be in the same area as the Queen. Yeah. And sometimes that happens with, within clans. Mm -hmm. uh, the history, you know, the, the countryside, anything, people want to be part of it. But we mustn't take it for granted mm -hmm. um, that, you know, ultimately they want to come here and, you know, we want to be with them. But as I said, it's, it's celebrating Scottish roots and being part of it. You know, it's, it's, it's easy. It's in our blood, um, to be honest. And, uh, well, as long as we can, be it, you know, St Andrew's Night, Burn Suppers, there are lots of things that we can celebrate mm -hmm. uh, and they, they take, uh, take place across the world. Yeah, that's really amazing. And how do your children um, feel about you being clan chief? Um, well, again, the clan's been part of them. They've always supported my father, their mm -hmm. grandfather. Yeah. I think they've all, they've been to every single clan association uh, gatherings um, in the years, years gone by. So they know a lot about it. Mm -hmm. um, I think in modern terms, I'm hashtag... 28 chief or something like that but you know so there are different ways they embrace it yeah uh, they think it's amusing at times um various nicknames come across the the dinner table <laughs> but um no i think they're proud and i think they're proud because they understand it they're involved in it mm -hmm. um and you know hopefully they'll be part of it for the years to come yeah. i mean you know it, things may change and they may not be at my side every every year at a gathering, for example, but yeah. they will be as my as my children as I am their father. So, um, but yeah, there's there's uh, I think they I think they they find it quite quite cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think um, having your children being involved in the clan is helping to um, help a younger generation become more involved in the clan? Possibly, possibly. I mean. I don't know if any of their immediate friends do what they do on the first weekend in August every year, yeah. uh, don the kilts and do everything Scottish or clan associated. But mm. but I think certainly uh, it, it's nice to have something different. Like, but, you know, yes, them appearing at a, an event with me or separately to me might encourage other people to to do the same or yeah. join join an association or get involved in it. I think it's something we've got to be very careful of. We don't want to have a missing gap where yeah. children have lost their, the touch with history mm -hmm. uh, and what it means. But um, yeah, I think if they continue to, to follow it, then it will only encourage future generations. Yeah. Is that something that you feel is important for the clan is to get 
the younger generations involved Ab- that ab- can absolutely continue. um you know that that the young are the the lifeblood in in 10 25 30 years time mm-hmm. you know at the moment my age grouper uh, are the ones that are sort of following in the footsteps of my father and and his all of his friends who are clan members mm-hmm. um but there has to be people people behind us yeah definitely Did you find love through your clan connections or was it just pure chance that <laughs> Annie was a McPherson? Uh, long story. I'll try and keep it brief. Okay. Uh, I was 10 and she was five when she pushed me in the family fish pond <laughs> up at Tomatin. Um, and we met again 16 or so years later at the clan McPherson gathering at oh, the, wow. the ball. Oh, wow. Um, and... Three years later, I got down on bended knee beside the very fish pond that she pushed me in and asked uh, to marry me. So, oh, in definitely. short, yes, yeah, <laughs> we found love at the Clown Person uh, Association uh, gathering. Mm-hmm. But um, and yeah, and McPherson spelled all the same same way, which is very convenient. Yeah, that is very convenient. <laughs> <laughs> we assume you'll be the only person who really knows their family tree. Um, do you or your wife Annie have any unusual stories to share of your family tree? Um, gosh, yes, I suppose we have a, a, the resource mm-hmm. about our family tree. Yeah. We don't always get it out very often. It's 30 foot long, <laughs> <laughs> kept in a, in a metal tin. But yeah. yes, I mean, we have been very lucky that our forebears have kept a very good record. So mm-hmm. we do understand and have the ability to go back in time to see what's there. Mm-hmm. Um, famous people, famous stories, not a great deal. Some that have, have changed, you know, I mean, James Ossian McPherson uh, was, was a classic one. He translated the uh, poems of Ossian from Gaelic. Um, he was actually an agent for one of my forebears, Colonel Allen, who sent him money to buy him a Highland estate, if you like, uh, up north only to embezzle it, um, and uh, bought it for himself. So we settled actually in Blair Gallery. Um, okay. So I could have been living in the Highlands of Scotland. Yeah. Um, so no, funny little stories like that, but nothing, nothing of note. I mean, Clooney of the 45 features in Robert Louis Stevenson's Kidnapped. You know, so there are yeah. connections with, with the history side of things. Um, mm-hmm. Quirky little things. Yeah, yeah. There, there are little things there, but not, not, no real big direct links to us. Mm-hmm. So moving on to the association, do you need to be Scottish to join the McPherson Clan Association? No, no? in short. Okay. Um, obviously, the origins are, are Scottish, but no, you don't. We have just shy of 2,000 paid-up members worldwide, so mm-hmm. we're a very active clan, and they come from all over the world. Uh, we've got branches in obviously Great Britain, Canada, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, America, wow. and America are almost make up half of that membership, as mm-hmm. you can imagine. So it's a no, you don't need to be Scottish. Associated names and families, um, very much. There are all sorts of variations of, of the spelling of Macpherson, all the way through names that have had association with Macphersons from centuries ago mm-hmm. um, and they can all become members of the clan and you don't actually need to be you know a McPherson to join the association and support the museum or anything like that yeah. um, you know some people dig deep to find a clan that they like as opposed to an association but mm-hmm. no you don't have to be Scottish I mean you know uh, I could ask George Clooney <laughs> to become a, um, a member yeah he's an associated name Clooney of McPherson of Clooney so yeah. No, you don't need to be Scottish. And how do people go about joining then? Well, we again, going back to the volunteer side, we have a, a, a lots of committees and various people like that, but we have tr- uh, treasurers and secretaries and whatever who look after the membership. Mm-hmm. And it really is a case of, of joining. Um, we don't necessarily ask for proof or identification. Yeah. Um, and I don't think a lot of people will just join it for the sake of joining it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they will look through the associated names, see if they belong. And if they don't, sometimes they approach me directly and ask, can can they swear fealty to the chief? Mm-hmm. And uh, more often than not, of course, we, we agree and welcome with open arms. Yeah, oh, that's lovely. 
And what would I expect if, say, I was to join as a member? What could I expect of being part of the association? It's not a vastly expensive joining fee. <laughs> we don't provide a lot, but we provide in different branches across Scotland, England and Wales mm-hmm. events that you are invited to. Um, you get the annual Clan McPherson magazine, which is called Craig Do. Okay. Um, so you get that in the post, a lovely journal full of interesting articles and, and, and associations with the clan and stories and pictures of gatherings and all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Um, but more importantly, you, you, you generate that connection. You know, you have that ability then to connect mm-hmm. by being invited to these events to meet these people. So yeah. whilst you don't get lots of freebies or anything, you you do get that sort of feeling of an association. Yeah. Um, and as I said, the Craig Do is a big part of that, along with the museum. It doesn't give you membership to the museum because it's a museum and you can donate freely. But, you know, it gives you a lot of lot of little things that, that, that make that seem to matter. Mm hmm. And you have a clan gathering organised for later this year, which will be your first gathering officially as chief. Mm-hmm. So what do you, what all goes on at a gathering? And <laughs> I, I won't tell you. Yeah, <laughs> I won't tell you too much. But no, okay. joking aside, it, yeah, it, it is a big part. I mean, we've been gathering for this is our be our seventy fifth year. Wow. Uh, and it's also the celebratory year of the Clan McPherson Museum, which has been going for 70 years. Wow, that's so, amazing. Uh, and yes, as you say, my first as, as chief, although unofficially last year we, we did gather yeah. um, in, in Newton Moor. But yes, the first official in-person gathering. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a weekend of, of events, predominantly in you, I say usually, the Clan, the, the Highland Ball on the Friday night. Saturday is the AGM followed by the Highland Games, where there's a, a kilted McPherson march into the games field. Oh, wow. Uh, then a Cayley in the evening, where we all try and perform, <laughs> and some very good performers within our ranks. Um, church service on the Sunday, uh, a picnic at the Cairn, which is a memorial site um, just up near, I'll say, between Lag and Newton Moor. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then um, we may have a piping uh, extravaganza in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So it, it follows that framework so people know what it is and what it involves and it's yeah. always on the, f- the first Saturday in, in August. Okay and do you have anything special planned for this one since it is such a uh, monumentous uh, year? I think, I, think it's, I think it's predominantly around the museum. Right. Um, we've had big gatherings where we've had lots of people for the various uh, celebratory years but, mm-hmm. but the museum uh, is 70. It's undergone a massive revamp. Okay. Uh, I encourage anyone to go and have a look in, whether in Newton Moor so to go and have a look because it is a fabulous testament to the people that have worked so hard, but also restoring, maintaining, keeping the Macpherson artifacts and 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 uh, local artifacts too connected to the clan. So we're going to be focusing on the museum this year. Yeah, and so what can you all see at the museum? Is it kind of a collection of pieces of Macpherson history then? Yeah, we call it. Um, McPherson memorabilia or something like that yeah. but yes I mean you'll see family trees you'll see portraits of, of, of previous chiefs you'll see war medals to uh, famous McPhersons who, who fought in the wars um, you'll, you'll see bits of history timelines mm-hmm. of our involvement famous McPhersons things invented by McPhersons yeah. things like the the fiddle of James McPherson the outlaw uh, when he was hung at Banff his fiddle was smashed into pieces and it's at the museum mm-hmm. the black chanter that fell from the sky uh the battle of, uh, of north inch and in perth and all these sort of wonderful things that have provenance to the clan but yeah. are also interesting for local and hopefully scottish history along the way yeah and are things like can are things still being donated that are part of mcpherson history is it like an ongoing exhibition absolutely it's yeah it's, it's bits and bobs you know a lot of books uh, do come to the fore. I mean, uh, going on eBay and various auction sites, you can type in McPherson and, I don't know, find a silver teaspoon. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes, you know, the provenance is, is key to being it, making it interesting. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, you know, people are very generous and very kind with their donations to make it, one, a safe place for that artefact, but also to, to educate people as to, yeah, uh, as I said. McPherson's through the years and, and through the centuries, but it's um, no, it's a lovely place to go. And, and as I said, it wouldn't be that without kind donations, not necessarily money, but 
Yeah. But objects. Objects as well, yeah, yeah, definitely. So as well as clan gatherings, do you get up to anything else exciting? Anything that was going on through lockdown or anything like that? You mean like clan orientated yeah, or yeah. 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 Okay. Well no no not really. I mean we did do as I said a sneaky sneaky gathering in in August sort of unofficially but mm-hmm. that was to keep the march from uh, Old Rillia down to the Elam which is the, the the games field at Newton Moor even though there wasn't a Highland Games yeah um we've had various little events um AGMs of meetings of, of various branches but no nothing nothing fun per se because we've obviously not been allowed to yeah. meet in person mm-hmm. um, which has been a real shame mm-hmm. but uh, let's hope that's going to change yeah year. let's hope so this year <laughs> and then finally and um, this is a question I love to ask everyone but what is your favorite tartan um it's the the hunting McPherson mm-hmm. um I wear the hunting with first and during the day and the dress at night with black tie mm-hmm. um, and Bonnie Prince Charlie jacket, etc. and all the, mm-hmm. all the things that it entails. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that the reds, the ancient red uh, and whatnot, are, 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 shouldn't be worn. People have their own taste, but uh, it's purely down to taste that I wear the hunting yeah. and during the day and, and the dress at night. Yeah, well, I do like the hunting. It's my favourite, <laughs> my first in tartan. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jamie. It's been great to speak to you and learn more about the clan and the association. And I hope your gathering goes really well this year. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.